Good morning everyone and welcome to worship on this Thursday the 3rd of August, the Feast of St. Germanus of Auxerre, known in Welsh as Garlon Sant. He was Bishop of Auxerre in the 5th century, Gaul. He abandoned a career as a high-ranking government official to devote his formidable energy towards promotion of the church and protection of his flock in dangerous times at a considerable reduction in wealth and status. He personally confronted the barbarian king Goar, and in Britain he's best remembered for combating the heresy of Pelagianism on a visit to the British church and helping to promote the cult of St Alban, the proto-martyr of Britain. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The night is past, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 37, the first 11 verses. Do not fret because of those who are evil, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass they will soon wither, like green plants they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found, but the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Blessed and holy God, ever merciful and forgiving, may we turn from what is evil and do what is good in your sight that we might be saved by the cross of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from St. James's Epistle, chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly, in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Adulterers, do you not know that friendship in the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you suppose that it is for nothing that the scripture says, God yearns jealously for the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? But he gives all the more grace. Therefore it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning 
and your joy into dejection. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It wasn't only St. Paul who had to deal with situations of division and conflict in church life. We don't know who St. James was writing to, except that the epistle begins with him greeting the twelve tribes in the dispersion. He's talking to Jewish believers in Jesus, scattered afar by persecution, but also expatriate Jews settled in trading cities around the Mediterranean coast. They still went on pilgrimage to Jerusalem, where they may have heard the gospel and returned home converted to the Messiah Jesus. Jews down the ages learn from each other by discussion and argument around the dinner table about scripture, life, the universe and everything, disputing rather than falling out with each other, trying to live together and respect each other's different opinions. Some of them would be strictly orthodox in belief and practice, others more liberal and open, influenced by Greek and Roman culture, with different social and moral values and behaviour. Added into the mealtime conversation, recent controversial change of mind and heart by those converted to Christ would come into the picture. In the synagogue and at home, there'd now be scope for three-way domestic tension. James doesn't try to explain and interpret these differences of opinion or values to his readership. He dives deep into the life of the soul, examining human motivation and what drives it. He speaks of cravings at war within us, dark energy, generated by pride, greed, wrath, envy, lust, gluttony and sloth. St John of Damascus, 600 years later, itemised nearly 300 kinds of sinful behaviour, calling them passions, arising from the seven deadly sins. The devil really is in the detail, dividing us from ourselves and from each other. Emotions and impulses in conflict within us are messy, confusing to cope with, as in times of war or after catastrophic storm damage. James is very much to the point in his analysis. You want something and do not have it. Driven by desire, wanting to get our own way, to please ourselves, that's us. Sometimes desire is beneficial to us and others when we want what's good, life-giving, wholesome and just. But there are occasions when the will is driven by those seven deadly sins. Let's acknowledge that both sets of impulses exist within us and the conflict between them too. Do we ask God's help to understand and act on what's holy and true? You do not have because you do not ask, says St. James. We struggle and fail to look trustingly to God. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Consumerism Retail therapy was around back then, it seems. Please, please me, we pray easier than we pray thy will be done. If we humbly ask God, we receive all we need to rise above the storms of passion, the murmurs of self-will, as it says in the hymn, O oh, Jesus, I have promised. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. O oh God, the creator and preserver of all, we pray for people of every race and in every kind of need. Make your ways known 
your saving power among all nations, that the whole world may be governed with justice and peace. Hear us, good Lord. We pray for your church throughout the world. Guide and govern us by your Spirit, that all Christian people may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Hear us, good Lord. We entrust to your fatherly goodness all those who are anxious or distressed in body, mind or spirit. Comfort and relieve them in their need. Give them patience in their sufferings and bring good out of their troubles. Remember in your mercy, O Lord, those who have entrusted themselves to our prayers, especially Fides, Lorna and Geoffrey, Audrey, Jill, Father John, Michelle, Holly and Max, Callum, Jean, Ian, Philip and Doreen. Pray for an end to war in Ukraine, Yemen and Sudan, and for their suffering people, and all who suffer far and wide who have died because of conflict. Hear us, good Lord. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of our loving God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Source of all goodness, by whose gift your servant Germanus proclaimed in Britain the sovereignty of your grace, grant that your people may ever thankfully receive the fruits of your generosity, until at last we sing with him and all the saints the great Alleluia of heaven, where, with your Son and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign one God, now and for ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless us and keep us from all evil and lead us to life everlasting. Amen.